through Friday. It's um, glad to have all of you here today. Uh, in the studio, we have Libby Bell. Libby Bell is from South Africa or lives in South Africa. Um, I missed her by two days last time. We were um, just in transition to each other. So it's good to see you today, Libby. She'll be showing us um, some tips and techniques of her artwork. Um, you can ask Libby, if you're on Zoom, you can ask Libby questions directly. And if you're on Facebook, we will um, go ahead and get your question and uh, bring it over to, to Libby. Uh, Angela and Letiza and Giovanni are, are fantastic at doing that. I'm, they're faster than me. So with that, hello, Libby, welcome. Hello. Thanks so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. So we're going to start by um, seeing the slideshow, and then we'll learn more about Libby when we're um, done with the slideshow. And Libby's going to comment on what we're seeing. Yeah, I'm going to do a share screen now. OK, so hello again, everybody. Um, as always, we want you all to follow our guest artists, even as we do the presentation today. Uh, Libby is in, is in Instagram. She has an account. This is her handle. It's her, easy to remember her name, Libby Bell Art. She's also on Facebook. Oh, I didn't change it. So it's also in Facebook. It's the same handle, her name. And then Libby, the next couple of slides are your artworks. We'll be happy to hear a line or two for each of these. We start with this beautiful butterfly. Oh, thank you. Um, thanks, Ethel. Oh, yeah, this is one of my recent paintings. I, I um, am definitely going through a bit of a butterfly phase at the moment. I'm really enjoying painting them. Uh, so yeah, and I, I like the um, I like the more muted colors actually. Uh, so these browns and beiges and and soft blacks. I'm really enjoying painting with those at the moment, as you can see in this butterfly. Yeah, and again, slightly muted colors. This is a Camberwell Beauty butterfly. Um, it's probably one of the prettiest butterflies I've ever seen. So yeah, I hope I did it justice. <laughs> and paired with botanicals, I think people people enjoy that. Oh yeah, these were for fun. I've wanted to do these for ages. <laughs> I've wanted to do some animal shaped papyri. So um, these are literally just for fun. And um, I was trying out some new art watercolor pens that I had. Uh, so yeah, and I, and I love any blue and white um, pots. So yeah. Yeah, also something I've wanted to do for a while. I love topiaries. I'm forever trying to get my husband to topire everything in our garden. And that includes a few um, wild South African trees. So I don't think he's too chuffed about that. Um, so if I want perfect topiaries now, I have to paint them. Oh, this was um, one of many paintings I did for a series of three book covers that are going to be released very soon, or a series of three books that are going to be released. So this is a, a galleon ship for the back cover of one of them. Um, yeah, with needed black sails. Um, a hellebore, also for the book series. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, fa a series of fantasy books. So this map on the wall behind me was painted for the series of books as well. Probably one of my favorite commissions I've ever done. And that's the last image here. We're gonna go back on this frame. Those are beautiful. Yeah, lovely details. Yeah, totally. Okay, so um, Olivia, what, what are you gonna paint today? Uh, I've drawn out a sweet pea. Um, because I, I I think people would probably, I assume people would like to see me paint botanical. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, I've drawn, I've drawn it out and I have um, lightened my lines already. I, I normally use a piece of um, cream stick or sticky tack. You can see this was white. So <laughs> I just, um, I, I, after rolling it on many, on many paintings, it becomes, um, it becomes dark like this, but I just roll it over the lines like that. So that's why the, the lines are. I liked on this painting, but it, it is a sweet pea. I love the softer trailing botanicals um, rather than sort of the more stiff ones. So um, that's what I'm doing today. And it's got a good 
portion of stem and leaves, but also some really pretty pinky purple flowers. Beautiful. Okay. So you can start anytime you like. Remember sure you get as much time as possible. Okay, cool, sure. Um, can I show you what paints I'm gonna use? Of course. Yeah, maybe your okay. image, the paint, sure. Yeah, sure. So I'm I I I have got a, a few reference images of sweet peas. I sort of um very much use artistic license when I when I draw, um, because I always want the um because I, I do work from photos mostly, um, actually, yeah, 99% of the time. Um, so I, no photo is ever perfect. And my mom, who's also an artist, always told me that you are way better. She, she would say you as an artist are better than the photo. Um, so you can change it up, use artistic license. So I like to add in extra leaves and I like to exaggerate certain petals um, and things just to make, I suppose to make my botanicals more whimsy and soft. That's how I like them. So yeah, so I um, was just saying before this, I've got a, I've got a full drawer of watercolor paints <clears throat> that I don't use, but this, I shared it on my Instagram the other day. Um, I shared my stash, my Daniel Smith stash, because I have recently been, not recently, maybe a year ago, been, no, maybe two years now, been converted to Daniel Smith watercolors, and this is my Daniel Smith stash. So um, it's in a very pretty Fortnum and Mason's tin, and um, these are the, the Daniel Smith colors that I have. Um, and today I'm going to be using the um, <clears throat> the undersea green. Oh, I forget I have this camera. Uh, undersea green. Um, I must admit I don't know if it's a case of um, the undersea green being the superior green <laughs> of all greens, but I, or or if I've been or if I've become lazy. But um, I sometimes just use undersea green for leaves, stems, and what you know, whatever other green there is in a painting because it's got such a huge depth and um, you can see it if you, if you, if you drop some water onto, like onto, um, like on a dot card, if you drop some water onto the undersea green as it spreads, you can pick up yellows and so many different tones of green in that. I don't know if I'm using the right words, but um, yeah. So anyways, what I'm saying is, is that it's almost like a whole range of greens in one tube. So um, yeah, I'm going to be using undersea green and then um, I'm going to be using <clears throat> imperial purple because I am actually um, painting a, a purple sweet pea, but um, I don't love, I don't love it to be just purple. So I'm going to add in some of this um, rhodonite, rhodonite genuine, I think that's how you say it. I'm going to be uh -huh. using that as well. Yeah, if I take any other colors at any stage, I will let you know, but for now it's going to be those three. And so, and Libby, just, what kind of what kind of paper are you using, and what is the angle of your board, if any? My angle is probably the angle of my board is probably um, I said we're like hot, like 20, 25 degrees. I actually normally paint with it a bit higher because it saves my back from like from leaning over because I have to be quite close to my paper. Um, my eyesight's not what it used to be. Should actually just get glasses. Anyways, um, so it's probably 25 degrees. Um, and um, the paper that I'm using is uh, Fabriano Soft Press. I've also actually only discovered this recently. I used to use a, I used to use a, a, also a Fabriano paper, but a Rosapina, which is a 100% um, cotton etching paper um, because I specialized in printmaking in my fine art degree. And I had a whole lot of etching paper left over. So when I wanted to start playing around with watercolors, I just used the paper that I had. And then for years, for six years, I used that paper and um, I loved it. And uh, it was it was a paper that I would recommend to everybody, but I knew it had, I knew it had pros and cons. I knew that the fibers lifted quite easily because it's not a watercolor paper, um, but I never had to stretch it because it's very thick and very absorbent. So it never really buckled. Although I do use very little water when I paint um, and yeah, so, so that was what I was happy with. And then Fabriano brought out their new soft press. So not hard press, not, not hot press, not cold press, soft press, um, which is, was new to me and was new to South Africa, actually, I suppose, maybe a year ago. Um, and, and Primart introduced it to me and I, um, I got a little sample of it. I got an A5 sample sheet of it. And after I painted on it, I was like, I never want to paint on anything else again. So now I paint on... On that, so yeah, it's. I don't know if anyone else on any of the other apps on here use it, but the, the soft press is just amazing. 
Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm just I've just put like a few little um, dots of color. That's the that's the um, imperial purple, and the rhodonite genuine, which is like um, it's just going to give a bit of depth to the purple. Um, and just make it, yeah, give that, give that little bit of pink to it. Um, and then there's my undersea green. So I use a tiny bit of paint, um, which is what I also want to just tell people with the dot cards. I think sometimes people who have never used dot cards um, would be like, oh, is this just to see, just to see the colors? And it's not, you can actually do a whole painting from dot cards because there's quite a lot of paint on them. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to start with some of the stems I normally do. And um, I normally um, have quite a bit of, excuse me, quite a bit of concentrated um, so color. And then um, I'll use a, a fairly thin brush. I think this is a size six um, to apply to one side of the stem. And then I'll use another brush, probably the same, same size. This is one of my no-name brown ones um, to then spread the color across the stem. Um, so to give the impression of light, so I'm going to, so this is my artistic license coming through. I am working from an image, but I also just, I just wing it sometimes as I know, as how, how I think I know it's going to look best, obviously from having painted quite a few stems before. Um, so this brush just has water on it. And um, I'm not sure if you can see, but um, the undersea green, I don't think you can see. I think um, it's the, you know, the, the camera's a bit far, but the undersea green is just amazing. All the colors that come out when you mix it with water and spread it, it's just, they're just, it's the most fantastic color. I love it. And then um, with certain things, like if I've gone over a line and it's gone too thick or whatever, I'll just leave it until um, this, this section of the painting dries. And then I can come and edit it later, which is what I love about the Fabriano paper. I must admit, I've tried other papers, but um, I suppose I, I'm not enough to be able to fully comment. But with, Fab, with Fabriano, both the this, this soft press and the one that I used to use, um, it's very easy to edit, I find. So what I'll do is I'll I'll come back and I'll with a clean brush, I'll just obviously just run my brush over this area a little bit and then I can take my piece of like tissue paper or I just use Colton roll and then press it over it <clears throat> and that lifts almost all the paint on the paper. So you can actually you can actually edit your watercolor painting. I think a lot of people think once the paint paint is done on the paper, then they can't change it, but to a certain extent you can. Hi, Libby. This is Rajat here. Which brush are you using? Hi, Rajat. Um, I'm using this no-name brand one that I do like. It's a synthetic fiber one. That's just to spread the color. Uh -huh. And then I'm using my Cum Germany size six um, for laying down the paint. Cum Germany for me is my it's my favorite brush. Um, I, and I, I can only use synthetic oh, brushes. I was talking earlier Thank about. Thank you. Um, sure. Um, I was talking earlier about um, how I struggle with any Kalinsky, like genuine Kalinsky sable ones. Um, I struggle for more than one reason, but the, you know, from a technical reason, is it, um, it's that I, 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 they don't, the natural fibers don't bounce back for me like the synthetic fibers do. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sure.
So um, it's always a case of just starting with the um, with your brush loaded with quite a lot of paint, and then getting a, a clean brush with water and just spreading it, um, and that gives you that that sort of dark border or dark edge, um, and which creates the impression of light landing on one side of or coming on like you are landing on one side of the stem. I know, John, you ask um, for artists to post their finished work at the, you know, after the live is done. Um, and I will do that um, tomorrow morning when I can take a good photo in the light because um, obviously it's nighttime in South Africa now. So <clears throat> I think this is all looking very dark to you, but to me, <laughs> to me here in the light, um, there's a lot of variation in the green and the stems are light and lovely. Whereas in, in, the, in the dark now or with, with this, um, it's lighting at night now. It's um, it's it looks quite dark, I think, on the on the camera. Great, thank you. Sure. Um, where the stem joins, where the stem goes behind um, one of the flowers, which it's doing here. Um, as it goes behind the flower, I always like to make it a little bit darker to give the impression of um, depth and give the impression that it's, it's yeah, that, that the flower is standing out in front of it. So that's what I'll do there. I'll just add some extra paint at the top. Libby, your, your butterfly paintings look so detailed. Um, how long does it take you to do a painting like that? Oh, thank you. Um, so they, obviously they vary, but I mean, my butterflies are, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the thing that takes me the longest is drawing. Like this, for example, um, the sweet pea, the, the drawing time is, is quite, it is, is, is probably the most time consuming because also I'm not just copying a photo, I'm, editing and, and adding things in and working things out um, and often ch changing the photo so that it will look better. Because often if you look at a flower in a photo, it will, it looks a bit funny. So you have to, you know, you have to add a bit of petal in to make the flower look like a, a flower not like it's sort of being crushed or something. Um, so the, so with the butterflies, the drawing really does take me quite long. Um, so I, I think that from start to finish probably takes me between sort of six to eight hours per butterfly. Oh, okay. Yeah, lots of lots of details. So when I'm, when say for example, if my husband comes in and says, that's nice, is it finished? <laughs> and most often I'm only halfway because I've still got lots of little dots to do. And I like to, um, you know, just, um, I, I sometimes like to add quite um, like lighter colors from the tube. So for example, yellow is from the tube in little flicks. Um, mm -hmm. So this, so a lot of the the detail happens. I don't know if anyone's ever watched my my time lapses, and and they'll see like towards the end of the time lapse, my hands busy, busy, busy over the page, but nothing's really going on because they probably can't see all the all the details that are being added in. Yes. Thanks. Sure. Hi, Libby. This is already looking amazing. 
Oh, thank you. Uh, I recognize this voice. <laughs> I just love watching you paint. I love I love watercolor as it is, but um, I love how you use watercolor like pencils. Um, it's so fascinating to watch. I love um other watercolor as well, where they kind of like flood the page. But I've always been yeah. so fascinated and learned so much from you of how you paint um, just like using a colored pencil. So I just think it's so beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, um, I know, I, th I think that potentially that comes from being self-taught because um, we were never taught, <clears throat> we were never taught any kind of techniques in our degree, really. The, de the final degree that I did was very much conceptual art and um, postmodern. It was a bit uh, disappointing, I think, maybe for someone who wanted to focus on um techniques and 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 find out about different um mediums so i think that when i because when i started watercolor i was actually a, a personal trainer i was very much disillusioned with art after my degree um and so i just decided i wanted to, to do something again and i wanted to start painting the university that i went to very much discouraged painting they said it was <laughs> they, they didn't think it was it had a place in in, in art today i mean which is completely ridiculous um, we didn't, we couldn't argue though, because if you argued with your professor, chances are you wouldn't get a very good mark on that project. Um, but um, no, we had, we had lots of wonderful professors, but anyways, um, so uh, we were encouraged not to paint. That's why I specialize in printmaking. Um, but then when I came back to art after having not made any art for like two years, uh, then I decided to start with watercolor. And I, I started, I always tell people this because a lot of people ask me, what kind of you know what they what materials they can start with like what paints them they need to start with and and I always say like if you can't afford um you know the most expensive materials I mean I don't know don't know who can these days to start out a new hobby um you must just start with what you can and when I started watercolor painting I think I bought a set of 12 watercolor tubes in a in a set I can't I don't even remember the name of the package um for about 72 rand what's that in dollars three dollars <laughs> I think it's like three dollars for 12 tubes um and that's how I started so um and I used that set for long um so yeah so I think that's maybe if, if I'd had a class in watercolors I think that my teacher would have said to me maybe you know you need to learn to flood the page and you need to let the watercolors flow or whatever whereas having having taught them having been self-taught then I, I just use them intuitively I suppose which is like a pencil like you say but I love that because it's like it's your own expression you know you, the, um, the thing that you like taught yourself so it's it's kind of like not yeah it's like your passion on a page and it's just oh. always so beautiful <laughs> oh thank you so much and I remember during lockdown um when we had COVID I mean you even painted using coffee and I was like completely blown away so it just goes <laughs> to show like you are so incredibly naturally talented that you could paint with coffee so <laughs> yes you're so inspiring <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much yeah I mean that painting with coffee I did not realize coffee was so sticky I don't think that painting ever dried ever <laughs> I think it's still sticky now well, it would still be even more beautiful, so. <laughs> Same. I'm, I'm painting off the page now, sorry. So there's a, um, a little bit of stem that comes up behind this, this um, sweet pea. And sweet peas are quite nice because when I was drawing this, um, and like I said just now, when you when you're figuring out um, your how your painting's going to look, what your composition, um, then sweet peas are. I don't think there's there's ever been a, a photo of a sweet pea from the front because they're just all over the place. So you can really get creative with your sweet pea flowers. So these ones that I've that I've um, drawn in here are very fluffy and um, very very. Um, very artsy sweet peas as opposed to like um you know they they just <clears throat> they very much um I very much used uh artistic license with these ones. You'll see now when I start to paint them.
So I wanted to ask you, um, when you do start painting the flowers, um, to create the like shadow on each, because you know, like there's different colors within the flower or the petals. Do you start off light and add the darker color or do you start dark and add the lighter color depending on like what you're painting? Yeah. Um, so probably I'd, I'd use a similar technique to this. I'd, I'd, um, I'd look at the flower and I'd start with solid color just because of these, these paints, um, the, these, Oh yeah, these Daniel Smith paints, the pigment is so beautiful that, and it's so strong that you can start with a tiny bit of paint in the center or say, say you've got a, um, <clears throat> say you've got a darker area, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so, so say you've got a, a, a piece where there's, um, where it's darker, say for example, at the top there, there's this, this flower is casting a shadow on the top of this, um, this flower. So I'd, I'd put in some very, um, uh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say it. I'd, I'd use a very little water and I'd, I'd put some paint in here and then I would spread it out from there. But chances are I would need to go back in and darken that area again. So yeah, I suppose I work from dark to light, but conservatively. So I wouldn't just go in with the darkest color that I could. I'd go in with like, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd start sort of medium dark. <laughs> you know, I don't wanna, I don't want to go in too heavy. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. Thank you very much. <laughs> sure. Um, okay. These sweet peas have these little trailing, little trailing bits. I don't know. Some a, a botanist will know what these are called. And um, I've added quite a few in. I think um, the paintings that I were looking at all had one or two. In. I mean, not the paintings, the photographs. And I love them. And they add such a sense of whimsy and they're so they're just so light and lovely and delicate and so um i added a whole lot extra in tendrils tendrils there we go who said that linda <laughs> <laughs> tendrils that's exactly right <laughs> this is the pumpkin hi libby this is Ashley. Hi, Ashley. I love your botanical work and your butterflies. And I also love Fabriano soft press, kind of obsessed okay. with it. <laughs> yeah, me um, too. I, it's, it's the best. Mm. Um, there was a question in the chat that was similar to a question I had. And it was, um, the question in the chat was, how big is this piece you're working on now? And my question was, how big do you usually work? Okay, um, thanks, Ashley. So this piece is A4. So what's that? That's like 21 centimeters across and then 29, almost 30 centimeters, you know, like a ruler. Here, this is, these are the centimeters <laughs> for anyone using, what's that? That's imperial, no, metric. And then here's, here's inches. So what's this page is like just short of, it's 11 and a half inches tall or in height, and then it's um, eight inches wide. So it's kind of like standard paper size. Um, and then I normally, I usually work smaller. Um, my, my work has changed in recent years. I actually started declining commissions in September last year, so I could work on some personal projects because I've been doing, um, I've been painting commissions for people for six years. And um, as much as I am grateful for commissions, um, and do enjoy them. I just got to the point where I was like, I was putting so many of my personal projects on hold. And I think as a creative, you become frustrated if you can't um, fulfill some of those like personal projects. So um, yeah, so 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 I was, so with commissions, obviously the paper is kind of set by the client or the paper size, depending on what they want you to paint. Um, but generally I like to work quite small. Um, yeah, probably, this is probably the biggest I'm working like at the moment, but I do have some larger botanicals planned. Um, but yeah, probably this size and smaller, if, if that helps. Thank you. Sure. I think it's, um, I think it does help in terms of sometimes with my, with, when I, when I do paint on a larger scale, it's quite daunting and, um, I do get, I, I'm not bored, but, um, it's it's quite 
I don't know, it's, it's, sometimes it's like creatively crushing to know you've got this massive artwork ahead of you. I think other artists can relate. So I think when I'm feeling like that, then it's nice to um, do some of my small originals like the, uh, like my butterflies, because um, then they're kind of done in one day and you have the satisfaction of having finished an artwork um, as opposed to having this artwork nagging at you the whole time that you know you need to finish and it's just not getting finished no matter how much time you seem to be putting in it. And that's like my big my big vase originals. I've done some really big originals of like very intricate vases with orchids and a bird um, and, and birds on the vases and botanicals painted on the vases. And then um, those take very long. <laughs> and I need to be finishing some small originals in between just to have that, that satisfaction of having finished some paintings or a painting. Um, okay, I'm probably going to just start on some of the flowers now, just to give a bit of variation. Um, so like I said, the, um, the flowers in the picture that I, was <clears throat> that I was looking at were very much purple, and I do love purple, but um, I think it will be, it will, they'll have a bit more depth if I add a bit of pink in. And again, that's artistic license. I think anyone who is a botanical artist, like a proper qualified botanical artist um, who's part of a botanical art society uh, will cringe at me making my own sweet pea colors, but um, I'm going to do it. So on my palette, I'm just going to um, mix up a bit of the purple with the pink. And you can already see it's just, um, it just gives it a lot more depth and warmth. I think that's what comes with the, the pinks and the reds, just adds a, a warmth to the purple. So you can see that already, as opposed to the imperial purple on its own. Um, <clears throat> the paint that I'm putting down now is um, it's quite concentrated, I suppose that would be the word. Um, and then I'm starting with um, a darker area and I'm going to spread it out. Libby, does that brush have water in it, or do you just dip it in water? No, um, it, it, I know it looks like it does. No, it's an acrylic thing. It's oh, um, okay. It, it was hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love how oh. you do that, though. That's really cool. I have to use that in my flower paintings. Um, what's that? What dipping it in the water? Yeah, I've never thought about doing that. That's great. Yeah, just using a clean a clean brush loaded with water to spread the paint. Yeah, and I've never done that. Yeah, it's a nice um. So so that is why one of the reasons that I love I don't know I don't know which one it is I don't know which one um is responsible for this but I think it's a combination of both but the Danielson's watercolors and the um Fabriano soft press makes spreading watercolors just so easy and. Um, so this, for example, now I've put down the fairly concentrated color here, and then I've got my wet brush and I'm I'm working it up towards the edges. So so now I can get up and leave my painting, and I can come back tomorrow, and I'll still be able to get a brush, wet it, and spread that color, which is amazing because um, it's it just makes it 
yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a combination of the, the Daniel Smith and the soft breast because I've used another paper, a really expensive paper. I got sent some sample pads the other day and it's a really pricey paper. And I was like, wow, this is going to be amazing. And I just couldn't spread color like I can on the soft breast. Oh, press. really? So that's why I love it. Mm, well, I'll it's really it's, it's, I'll try that soft press because yeah, that's really just a beautiful easy. effect. Yeah, okay. mm. It's it's minimized like my frustration. Like if I'm ever painting and I, I'm trying to I'm trying to spread something and um and I can't and it's I've laid down the color. I know people struggle with, with reds um and any like crimson pigments. I know they struggle to um to, to spray those once you put the color down it kind of it's really high, like high staining i don't know john will know the technical term um but with the soft prep it just minimizes that it's just they, it's still spread so beautifully even the reds and the crimsons and the pinks beautiful leave is coming out really really well i love it uh, do you happen to have the the reference photo? Um, yes. How do you want me to show it to you? I must have showed you on my phone on this phone that I've got here. Fair phone. Well, if you don't have it, don't worry. No, I do. Don't know if you can see. The very purple. Um, and um, the composition maybe, is similar. Maybe it's something. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, can you show again, please? One more time. Can you show again? Here we go. Oh, yes. Oh, very nice. Yes. Yeah. Really? So I've, changed, I've changed the composition a lot. I'm going to change the leaves because I don't like these leaves at all. So I've actually got a whole lot of other sweet pea um, uh, <clears throat> leaves that I've got for reference. But I must admit, after having painted lots of leaves, I sort of wing it with leaves. Um, and then if I'm struggling and it's not looking right, then I'll then I'll go back to the reference image. Um, Thank so, you. Yeah. Sure. So it's definitely um, slow progress, but I think anyone who paints in watercolors will know that. Um, and <clears throat> here's the here's the dark one that I was talking about earlier. The darker section. So I'll just add some fairly concentrated color. In. I don't know if it's too far for you to see. So this brush just has water and it's clean, but it spreads the paint all the way down. And what's nice is that um, by the time, like by the time I've got to the bottom of this section, um, I, I keep on dipping my brush into the water and then wiping it on the cloth so that it has very little water on it, but clean water. And then by the time I've spread the paint all the way down to the bottom of this part of the, of the flower, it's almost clear. So um, it gives like a really soft fading, um it, yeah it just fades the color beautifully it's a beautiful transition yeah yes exactly transition and then you can see that 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 darkness has gone away a bit so i've got my concentrated color on my brush again on this on my first brush and then i just go and dot it back <coughs> in there again so it darkens it again there because obviously having sprayed that color down you lose some of the intensity of that color at the top so it's important to dry your brush as well after you wet it, right? Yes, well, certainly for the way that I work, I, I'll i rinse it in the water and then dry off most of the water. So I've got a, I've got a wet brush um, with clean water on it. But when I, when I touch it onto the, onto the paper, it's not going to drop a whole lot of water onto the paper. I'm going to use it like a, um, almost like a, almost like a wet cloth to spread it. So no water is going to transfer onto the paper necessarily. It's going to help you spread it. Yeah, because a lot of water would create many blooms, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, exactly. Um, and then I can't get the details that I want. So these sweet these are very soft and light. Um, and so you can put your color down quite dark, but because again, because of the way that it spreads on the paper, that tiny little bit of color that I laid down there um, can be used to spread over the whole petal. And then obviously, um, if you lay down too much color, then you come in with your, um, your clean brush and add a, a bit more water in. And um, this is what people um, don't know when they, you know, when they start, you can lift pretty much all that color. I mean, that's gone back to white again now. So you can lift so much, so much color out. And I think people who, who when, when people start watercolor, they are scared. Like I said just now, they, they're scared that, that they're going to put down color and then they can't lift it up again. And maybe that's the case with other papers, but certainly not with the Fabriano. Yeah. So this, um, the petal of the sweet pea is behind the one on top. So there's a shadow being cast there. Um, and um, just a note on using black. I love using black. I do use black. I definitely don't stay away from it. But um, again, my mum, who is a fantastic artist, um, always says that you must be very careful of black because it can deaden an image. Certainly, I think in botanicals, potentially not when you're painting um, sort of maybe architecture or something like that. But um, when you are when you are painting botanicals, I think to add black in is risky sometimes. Um, well, certainly with the, the way I paint. Um, so I try and use, I try and use like um, as much color as I can to, to create the shadows and the, the darkness. So like um, much more intense color and just much more, um, just almost color like, like straight from the tube. So there's that shadow under the other pencil and then you come with your clean brush and you can blend it, blend all that color away. To be light and lovely towards the bottom of the flower. I'm already learning so much. That's good. That's so tough. I love your technique. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, these, this is obviously the, um, the I, I want to say the base layer. I, I won't do too much, but what I will do at the, at the end is um, so I'm saying do too much more to like to change what, the color that I'm laying down now. But when I say it's the base layer, it's because um, I will come in with a finer brush afterwards and then um, add in sort of detail. So when there are when there are like striations on a petal, um, those kind of things, I come and add in later. Because um, if I was to add them in now, obviously they would um, spread in wet watercolor. Do you ever use... Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Libby. Do you ever uh, use colored pencils um, on top of them to create like finer crisper things or do you always use like just a finer brush? Um, I always use a finer brush. I don't use any colored pencils, but I must say I'm quite partial <laughs> to using an HB. <laughs> um, and I just come in and add some detail with an HB. And I think, again, that's... that's um, it's not black, you know, HB has a bit more depth to it because it's gray. Obviously I wouldn't, I, I don't use enough of it for it to like shine on the page because when you use um, lead, it could be shiny. Um, so um, yeah, I sometimes just come in on top and add with one of my, one of my HBs, add some lines. Um, I'm trying to think that heli ball that I painted, 
I think some of the little outlines of the, um, uh, again, a botanist would know this, the little, tiny little yellow things in the middle of the flower. I want to say it's not a sepal, but anyway, it's a sepal, I'm not sure. Stamen? Um, but yeah, maybe the, the, the tops of the stamens, yeah. Um, and then I, I think, um, I think uh, on that early wall, I think I outlined them in HB and just to give them a little bit more definition. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I do, but never, never colored pencils, I'm afraid. Okay, no, awesome, thank you. I just wanted to know, because um, your detail is so fine. <laughs> yeah, ni nice, teeny tiny brushes. Um, and obviously keeping your brushes in good condition. I cannot use a, a brush that's splayed. Um, and some of my brushes do get splayed on the regs by my kids <laughs> when they get to them. Making happy memories. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Maybe here uh, there is um, a person watching you that um, called Yuko, Tori, okay. that would like to know if you paint background. Um, basically, no, but um, I, I always like the look of a background. I actually thought to myself yesterday, I should start doing backgrounds, but um, no, I mean, not with my botanicals really. Normally just on a, on a, clean background like this it's something that I have to figure out because um to add a background to the sweet pea afterwards would be a nightmare with all these little tendrils um so so if I did I'd have to paint the whole piece of paper first I think if I wanted to do like a tinted background and then I don't know how the paint for for detail would would go on top of that because because of the the soft print being so easily spreadable, like the, the paint being so spreadable, even at a later stage, must be dry for like a couple of days. I think that if I were to paint on top of a, a, a tinted background or painted background, I would think I would probably lift the color off in certain places. Yeah, it, it's it's a difficult one, but basically I don't paint backgrounds. Um, if I do, say for example, like this map behind me, um, it's a whole different ball game when it's not a botanical. Um, but I, I think I prefer not to. I'd rather focus on the detail of my subject and make it perfect. Um, and then potentially the paintings don't need a background, I think. So, so that's why I'm happy to not do backgrounds for now. Thank you. Sure. I've just added um, two dark areas in, and then I'm just going to spread the paint out just to blend them. see even where the um even where the edges of the paint have dried already it's very dry now we're not we're in winter in south africa and the air is very dry and i can pick up the difference um when using very small amounts of paint like sometimes i'll load my brush from my palette and by the time i if i'm using one of my teeny tiny brushes um like this one really tiny um by the time that the brush gets to the paper the paints are really dried on it, especially if we have a really hot, dry, windy day. We don't get rain mm. in winter. We have dry, crispy winters. Um, anyway, so so the the edge the the edge of your paint um, dries quite quickly, but because of the paper and the paint that I'm using, um, it's not an issue. You just go back and get some more water, and then you spread it again, as you can see here. So it really 
it's really just um it's a time saving thing as well because i used to find myself spending so much time trying to correct mistakes or correct edges that were too harsh and then you know adding in more paint to try and blur the edge of the to try and blur the edge and then it would get darker than i want the, the painting would be darker than i wanted it to be so working with the the, the right materials when you are working especially when you're doing commissions and you're working to um you know a, a tight schedule and um you need you need the, the materials that are going to get, get you the results you want the fastest and also that are going to cause the least frustration um i have minimal time to paint with my kids um so i need i need the materials that i'm the brushes and the paints and the paper that i'm using to do what i what I'm trying, you know, to do what I what I want them to do, um, as opposed to struggling away and trying to fix mistakes, and wasting wasting time. So, Liv, we have about eight minutes. Time goes really, really quick. It does. Uh, I'm sorry. Should have painted faster. No, 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 no. That's no. Thank you so much for answering all the questions. Could you do maybe do at least one leaf so we can watch you do one of the leaves? Yes, let's do that. Um, it's very, it's really beautiful. That's good. It takes time, but um, <clears throat> I know sure. that all artists know that. Yeah. Okay, let's do a leaf. I'll do. I'll try and do this leaf over here because it's got a front and a back. It's a folded leaf, this one over here. So quite um, intense color. I'm going to pick up from my palette. Put it in behind here. And especially leaves, you're going to come in with um, the detail afterwards. And um, oh, this is one of my leaf techniques. I think people who have seen me painting leaves on time lapses and on um, videos on my Instagram um, will have seen that often I I lay down dark color like this, blend it, and then when it's dried, I'll come back and I'll do a thin line of water. I'll see if I have enough time now to quickly show you um, to lift out where the um, veins in the leaf are, and that's another. Um, that's another beauty of the of this paper paint combo that I use um, is that you can do that. And when I say lift it out, I mean um, you obviously let it dry, like I'm going to do now, and then get your clean brush, wet it with a bit of water, normally quite a thin brush, and then almost draw the, the leaf vein in and then you press I press on it with a, a piece of that culture roll or like tissue paper um, and then it lifts out the vein in the leaf. Okay let me let this dry quickly. <clears throat> I'm gonna spread this bit of purple paint. Libby I just have to tell you how beautiful the sweet peas are. I just can't wait to try your technique. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad. This leaf is nearly dry and then I'll be able to lift out some veins in it to show you. I can maybe even move my camera closer. I can always probably shouldn't mess with it. Um, but um, let's see if I can do one now. So I'll I'll wet my brush. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take an even thinner brush, a really fine one. Really, really um, fine point on this one. I don't know what size this is. It doesn't have the brushes. Oh, it's a it's a triple, it's a zero, zero, three. Um, and then what I do is I just, um, just do one here so you can see. It doesn't look like anything, but. Oh, 
um, you almost paint in the leaf vein and then you take your paper and you press it and then it lifts the, can you see that? Can you guys see? Yes, we can see, it looks amazing. Yeah. That's a nice way of doing white paint then because um, a lot of artists don't like to use white and white watercolor is not always successful, but say for example, this, these are my own Perfect. my own leaf veins that I'm adding in now. But yeah, right. that's, and I can if I wasn't rushing, I would do them even finer than that. They would be, and they would be even more curved. But um, that's a really nice technique for leaf veins, and um, when you're using when you're using good watercolors and and paper that allows for it. Yeah, gorgeous. Great, that's great. Yeah. Hopefully that's something that um, everyone can use that will help with leaves. I love painting leaves, they're my favorite. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. I just have to echo it that um, other ladies said it's so beautiful and so light and delicate and feminine. And I've just learned so much just even in this short little hour. So thank you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I'm sorry it wasn't faster, but that is the nature of live painting, I suppose. Yeah. I want to say thank you to you, but I want to say thank you to John too, because every week, I don't know how he does it, he comes up with somebody extraordinary who shares their talents with us. Thank you right, very much. Thank you. Oh, yes, totally. That's, that, that's Ethel and Catherine do a, a marvelous job. Just marvelous. You have a great team. Great team. Great team. <laughs> yes. Margaret says, thanks for a wonderful demo. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for watching. And Nancy says, this style reminds me of A.R. Valentin, who painted California's wildflowers. Oh, that's a lovely compliment. Thank you. Thank you, Libby. It's great. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank okay. you. And Libby, you'll, you'll post the final work for us to see? I definitely will, yeah. And it will be in good light, not at night time. <laughs> Where will it be posted on, on, on David's site or on your site, Libby? I'll post it to my Instagram. And then we will repost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And Facebook as well, maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll definitely share it to Facebook because I won't be able to. I won't have done a video from this painting, so it will be a um, a still image, and I will definitely share it to Instagram and Facebook. That's lovely. And Thank we you. encourage our friends to follow Libby's um, Instagram and Facebook for more inspiration. She has lots of beautiful botanical works there. Thanks, Ed. And butterflies. Yeah, and butterflies. butterflies. <laughs> and so many butterflies, butterflies yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we have lots of guests today. Um, at one point, we were 120. Oh, no, I'm glad you told me that now. <laughs> <laughs> from all over the world. It's, not, <laughs> it's from all over the world. That's yeah. the no, DS Pakistan, all over. <laughs> family all over Amazing. the world. Um, my dad is almost pretend that no one was watching. So I said, I don't know what's worse. If no one watches, so it's like people watch. <laughs> well, I hope you bet a lot of money because you won. <laughs> Even my mother is watching you as well. Oh, that's Who's Muhammad. She is 80 Muhammad. years of age. Oh, that's sweet. Muhammad. <laughs> yeah, let's put that put Muhammad on spotlight and her mom. Hello. 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 Hi, Hello. 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 Thank you for watching. Sending you the regards as well. Oh, thank you so much. And to you guys. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you.
<laughs> okay, so with that, I wanted to thank Libby so much. I missed her by two days when I was in South Africa. So great to see <laughs> you live. Um, thank you everybody for watching and Libby will post her work. It's a beautiful work. And I hope I'll see you all next Thursday or Friday. Libby, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, John. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Happy Father's Day to all of you.